Hey, my name is Mark Hunter, the Sales Hunter, and welcome to another episode. We've got Gerhard Schwantner, Selling Power Sales Conference 3.0. More importantly, we're talking with Ben Cotton today about sales enablement. My name is Ben, and I lead sales enablement for HubSpot um, out of Dublin, Ireland. Um, and really, my role is um, helping sales reps to sell, do it more quickly, and hit quota. So can you um, start us off with uh, singing a typical Irish song? <laughs> I, I, I'd, I'd love to, but... Um... <laughs> How do you define sales enablement, Ben? That's a, a really uh, good, tough question to kick off with. And I, I spend a lot of time trying to answer that both internally and outside of HubSpot. Um, but really, we want to help reps, um, help them to sell and do it more quickly. Um, and we do, we do that through things like, um, could be training, it could be uh, through content, could be technology. Um, and another service we offer is something called deal support. And that's, that's really um, on-demand consultancy that reps can request um, to help them close deals. So kind of like a, a, a deal desk function. Explain the, the, the relationship between the corporate culture and the role of sales enablement. What, what would be the connection? Sales enablement, it's, we currently have it as part of marketing, but it, it partners really, really closely with sales. Um, and how, how we think about it is, so we, we, we're organized um, by funnel almost. So we have um, top, middle, and bottom of the funnel. Um, we, we see sales enablement as a, a bottom of the funnel role. Um, so once a, um, an opportunity has been created by the BDR. That's really where sales enablement becomes involved. And in, in terms of the, as the culture, really, um, I, I'm an advocate and coach and uh, helper of sales, really. Um, so I, I'm there to um, be championing sales um, in meetings, but also helping them day to day as well. And, and I like how Ben said that sales enablement st steps in towards the bottom of the funnel, because there's a lot of people that view sales enablement as a top of the funnel tool. And, and Ben, I love how you came right out of the shoot and said the bottom. I, I, I really think that's where the value plays out. And I think as a result, sales enablement is a huge piece of creating the culture because the culture really is, how do we get along? How do we all play in the sandbox? And HubSpot, you, you know, you, you guys are a great example of a company that, ha that has had phenomenal growth. And yet somehow you've created a chemistry and a culture. How are you involved with the Sales Enablement Society? We have a Dublin chapter and it's, I think, about nine or ten months old. So um, my, myself and one of my, uh, my friends who works at LinkedIn, Michael Jeffroy, he's the, the Dublin chapter president. So um, uh, Michael and I have been there from the start. And uh, yeah, I, think we, I think we're up to about 30 or 40 members now. So it's, uh, we have some good momentum in Dublin. But the way I think about it is um, sales name is a huge growth um, area or category at the moment. Um, there's, the, there's the VC funding flooding into the category. There's all these great tools and products coming on the market. Um, we've seen the rise of the sales and aiming society. Um, and then there's, I looked on LinkedIn, I think there's 250,000 people with sales and aiming in their job title. So it's a huge opportunity. It's a really big area, but there's not actually a lot of data out there or research um, looking at the state of sales and aiming today. And I think there needs to be research and data into best practice around sales and aiming. So what are the right metrics to track? Uh, I'd love to see some industry benchmarking and regional data um, and really what good looks like. And I think the Sales Enablement Society um, has done some really good work so far, but I think there's, there's a lot, lot more we could all do. What have you actually learned from other members that you have then integrated into your organization? I think the thing we learn and have taken back to our jobs is... Um, how revenue is the most important thing. That, that's that's the, um, the folks who are struggling a bit with sales and aiming and getting buy-in at their companies, they weren't really focused on revenue. They were more looking at um, lower level metrics around kind of NPS of training sessions or was a tool being used. And really, the folks who are doing the best stuff, they have this, this laser focus on revenue. Um, and that's certainly, um, certainly my goals at HubSpot are around quota attainment and revenue. So um, yeah, it kind of reaffirmed how important that is. 
articulate that for sales enablement people out there? What does it mean to be focused on the revenue? Well, I think what you'll find is if you don't have that that focus on revenue and ROI, your you know your your budget's going to get smaller. You're going to have less influence. You'll be less successful. Um, and really, if you're not um, generating revenue or helping the business grow, you're an overhead or an expense. Um, and I think you know, you're supporting sales. It's in, it's in the job title. You need to have that focus on revenue. I think that's a 90 second soundbite that every person in sales enablement needs to, needs to listen to every morning. Keep the focus on the money. Thank you. So let, let's shift uh, the conversation towards technology. Um, how did you see the evolution of technology in sales enablement in your company? I think what we're really interested in currently is what, what can, what, how can we automate stuff for sales reps? So the, these low value, but high frequency tasks that sales reps do, how, how can we automate them? Do, do they need to be done by a human? Um, and really we want to see what can be automated. So it, it um, frees up sales reps time to focus on that, that high value stuff that only a human can do. Where do you see the, the future of sales um, when you think about uh, the, all those new tools uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, cognitive computing. Um, how will that change the game? Ah, uh, that's, that's, that, that's the million or billion dollar question, I think. Uh, um, and I think kind of the next step is um, predictive technology. So it's, it's, it's one thing, um, technology doing what you're asking it to, but having technology that's going to make recommendations and suggestions to sales reps based on um, machine learning, and AI, I think that's really, really exciting. What would you say, Ben, is the defining piece when somebody comes to you and says, hey, we got this tool, we got this app. Well, what, you know, besides, you know, does it bring us money? What do you see are the two or three defining criteria that says, hey, this app, this tool might have a chance? Yeah, I, I think what's going to make our, our sales reps' lives easier um, so is, is that automating something or something? How is it going to help them save time? So I think that's kind of the first bit. But also um, anything that's going to give them, uh, how do I word it, some kind of insight or what's, what's going to help them sell more. Um, so it could be a piece of technology that helps reps reinforce learning, for instance. Um, what's going to help them become a better sales rep? I also want to give you a, a, an opportunity to talk about your favorite HubSpot tools um, and, and why other salespeople should explore them. My favorite tool um, is something we use internally. And this is a, um, a bot that I, I built for sales reps. So um, it, it's a bot that is currently within Slack. And um, it answers about roughly a hundred different types of sales rep frequently asked questions. And re really the, the rationale for this was, um, I, I'm a one person team that was getting asked repeated questions from a hundred sales reps. Um, so we built, we built this bot for them. And the idea is for those low value, high frequency type questions, sales reps can just go to Slack, which is our internal comms platform of choice. And um, they can ask questions around sales collateral, case studies, uh, request deal support, um, and a bunch of other stuff as well. So that's um, it's helped, it's saved me a bunch of time, freeing up uh, me to focus on kind of the high value deal support. Uh, but it also means sales reps get their, their questions answered immediately, any time of the day on an, any platform. I'd love to ask Ben, Ben, because you get to play with so many different tools out there. Where do you see the role or what do you see the role of the salesperson being three years from now? I think we're going to see uh, renewed importance or greater importance on um, consultative selling. And I think it's, we're going to see, rep, we're going to see more uh, emphasis on reps helping to educate and bring insight when they're selling. Um, I think we're only going to see more of that. Um, I think that's, that's, that's where we're going.